In late 2015, a gentleman by the name of Will Hodges took to the popular crowdfunding site Kickstarter to drum up support for a new model of fountain pen. Will's company, Tactile Turn, had run successful Kickstarter campaigns in the past, and his previous pens were quite well received, so this particular campaign was wildly successful. This new pen was known as the Tactile Turn Gist, and Will wisely did a couple of things that make the Gist stand out from the crowd. First, the design of the pen was different from most of what's out there on the market. It's a smaller pen with a surface treatment that is unique to Tactile Turn's pens. Secondly, Will provided supporters with an absolutely staggering array of materials and combinations from which to have their pen made. Now, the gist is starting to appear on not just the Tactile Turn website, but also in major retailers. In this review, we'll take a look at a couple of different Tactile Turn gists and a couple of different materials to show you a real Kickstarter pen success story. Hello everybody, welcome to The Pen Habit. My name is Matt Armstrong and I'm glad to have you here for another fountain pen review. Now, as part of my standard disclaimers before my videos, I did wanna let you know that I'm reviewing two pens in today's review. One of them I purchased with my own funds. The other one was provided by the manufacturer, just so there's no, no confusion about how that all plays out. All right, so the review for today is for the Tactile Turn Gist. Now, as mentioned in the intro, this is a pen that was funded by Kickstarter. Uh, the internet kind of went wild about this. Pen really took off, was wildly successful. There were a few delays in getting the machinery set up and, and there was a, a mishap early on with getting the, the machine running. They had to do some repairs and then ordering some of the materials. But uh, Will eventually came through as we all knew he would and delivered these wonderful fountain pens. Now they're starting to appear in retailers like Van Ness pens or Goulet pens, uh, maybe others by the time this uh, review goes live. So um, I'm going to be reviewing two versions of the pen. Now, uh, the pen comes in this cardboard box with a little fabric tab, and you pull it out, and there's a, uh, a foam insert into which the pen rests. Now, I'm going to be looking at two versions of the pen. This is the all-titanium version, and this is the polycarbonate version with Damascus steel finial and section. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Now, one of the things that makes these pens interesting is there are a whole variety of mix and match pieces. So he's working with polycarbonate, with steel, with um, copper, with brass, with Damascus steel, with titanium. And uh, there's one other one that I can't remember right off the top of my head. It's kind of a black finished metal, and I'm, I'm going to kick myself. I'll, I'll put a crawl here uh, to let you know what it is. Um, but, but there's a bunch of metals, and you can kind of, not willy-nilly, but you can pick different versions of these pens with some of these different materials. So I originally decided to go with the polycarbonate uh, with a Damascus steel finial and section. Now polycarb uh, is basically the same material that the Lamy 2000 is made out of. Macrolon is a trademark name of one of the materials. So it's basically a, a polycarbonate with fiberglass uh, embedded in it and then machined. So it's got that same kind of charcoal gray finish. Um, but both the finial, um, and I don't know how well this will show up on the video here, and the section are made of Damascus steel. Now, Damascus steel is steel that is kind of rolled and folded on itself, which results in this really um, intricate pattern. Um, from what I understand, Will gets his Damascus steel from Sweden. I believe that's where it was manufactured. And, uh, and it's really quite lovely. Um, so that's nice. The other pen is... That, that he sent to me is the all titanium version. So this is made of machined titanium, uh, the section, the, the body, the only thing that isn't is this black metal clip. Um, and I, I, I like the polycarbonate version 
but I love the titanium version. This is a pen. I'm not usually big into metal pens. I mean, that's generally not my thing. I find the grips to be slippery, but there's a reason why I really, really like this titanium pen. It just, it's the right fit. But anyway, because it shows up a little bit better on the video, I'm going to go ahead and use the black one to walk you through the design. So this is a fairly small pen, kind of a flat topped design. The finial on the top, as I mentioned on this pen is Damascus steel and it's, um, the body is made of that black polycarbonate and you've got this very sturdy, very stiff metal clip. I mean, this thing, you know, you could probably hang this pen from a, uh, <laughs> from a wire and hang from it yourself and it would it would stand the test. This is a rock solid clip. In fact, it might be a little too rock solid. It might be hard to clip to jeans or a shirt pocket, that kind of a thing. Now, one of the things that makes tactile turns pens kind of unique is that um, they machine these rings around the outside of the pen to give it a texture, ergo the phrase tactile turn. It's a turned pen, it's machined on a CNC lathe, and they go and cut these little grooves in the pen, almost like threads, um, but not as deep as threads, that give the pen a nice feel in the hand. Now, one thing you'll notice on this pen is the section, or the, the barrel looks kind of glossy, and on this material, the, the cap looks kind of matte. It looks like the cap didn't get polished, honestly, is what it kind of looks like. Um, it looks like a different material. Uh, you know, they're both nice feel, but I like this more polished feel. This feels a little rough on the cap, um, so I wish that had been a bit more consistent between them. But again, a flat, top, uh, flat bottomed pen. The cap comes off, and this is kind of an unusual thing because normally, the way it works is the cap screws onto the barrel, and then the section has a male tenon that goes into female threads on the pen. But this has both the barrel threads and, you know, the barrel and cap threads and the barrel and section threads on the barrel itself. So it's a male barrel going into female threads on the section. As a result, the section is very, has very thin walls. And it kind of results in a, and I'm getting ink all over my hands here, so uh, excuse me, <laughs> kind of results in um, very delicate looking section. It's still a really nice section, still feels very sturdy, but it looks a little on the delicate side. Um, on this polycarb version, the threads were a little squeaky, and, and even still, there's just a tiny bit of squeak uh, when I first got the pen, but that has kind of worked itself out the more I've used the pen. It is a cartridge converter pen, uh, but as the ink would be coming in contact with metal, this is not a pen that you could use as an eyedropper. Now, one other thing to point out, and this, um, there was a little bit of, of kerfuffle around this when it first came out. This does use standard international, it has a standard international connector here, so you could use cartridges or converters. The problem is that the pen isn't long enough for a standard length converter, like a Schmidt K5 style converter. So the converter on this pen is actually a little shorter, a quarter, half inch shorter. Um, so if you try to put some of your other converters in this pen, they're not going to fit, which is unfortunate. Um, Monteverde, I believe, makes these converters. Um, you might be able to get similar converters from, from Chinese manufacturers. Just know that you're not, they're not interchangeable necessarily. So, so keep that in mind. Um, I, I really would have liked the pen to have been maybe half an inch longer to accommodate a full-size converter, but so long as I, so long as you know, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, pen can post. It posts actually quite nicely, and this is another pen that I prefer to use when posted. Um, it's got a nice, nice feel, nice heft and balance. Um, it's a little short for me when unposted. It's still usable, but I prefer, especially if I want to hold it a little higher, I just prefer it posted. The titanium version is basically the same as the polycarbonate version. It's got the threads cut into the, the thing. It's obviously, because it's all metal, got a little more heft to it, um, but it's still not super heavy. Uh, the section is nice and textured and comfortable. It tapers down, so if you like a narrower grip, you can have that, or if you like a wider grip, you can grip it a little higher. And both pens use Bach nibs. So um, on the polycarb version, I got a, just a standard steel nib, um, you know, Bach 
same kind of nib you might get on the Denoble 300, which I've reviewed or will be reviewing, or the Keras Customs. You know, it's a standard number six Bach nib. So you know kind of what you're getting. You can also get titanium or gold nibs. So with the titanium pen, I, I actually have a titanium nib, which is great. Uh, you know, I like titanium nibs quite a bit uh, once you get them. Now, in the past, I've had problems with titanium nibs not being well adjusted. That is not the case here. So I've been really happy with this titanium nib, and I'll show you more about that when we get to the writing. <music> All right. Now, as a writer, this pen is not, there's nothing particularly flashy or showy about it. It's well adjusted. The nib is quite smooth, probably a two and a half to a three on my feedback scale, where one is low feedback and 10 is very high feedback. Um, the ink flow is nice and wet, but not overtly so. So nice, you know, wet ink flow there. Um, and it's, it's really consistent. I didn't have any problems with ink starvation, no problems with baby's bottom or hard starting, skipping, that kind of thing. Very nicely adjusted nib, as are most, you know, Bach number six nibs that I've tried. Um, really happy with this. Good reverse rider, but um, kind of a fine line there. Um, you know, really actually quite smooth. One of the nicer reverse riders that I have used if I were ever to do that with a regular basis. So it's a nice, if rather unremarkable writing experience. You know, it's 
when you get a pen like this with kind of a standard out of the box uh, screw in nib unit, what you're buying is the pen, not the nib itself, because you, you have a pretty good idea. Now people will adjust it differently. And this is certainly a nice, smooth, wet nib that I like a lot. It's a really, really good writer. So I don't want to say that it's a bad writer. It's just kind of, it's a standard rigid steel nib. Now, you want something with a little more personality, you start to take a look at the titanium nibs. Now I've used a few titanium nibs in the past. Um, the first one I ever used was on a stipula uh, Model T, I believe it was, with the T-Flex nib, and it was bad. It was really, really bad. Um, I was eventually able to get it work writing again, it, but it took a lot of work. Titanium's a really tricky metal to work with um, because it, um, I don't know, it just, it doesn't polish up as well. The, the you know, it's, I've never had as much success working on a t titanium nib as I have on a steel or a gold nib. Um, I tried a titanium nib on the Carolina Pens Charleston, I believe, the Jonathan Brooks made pen um, that I reviewed back early in season two, uh, three, season three, season two, I don't remember. I think it's season three. Um, but, and Jonathan told me he had to do a lot of work to get that nib writing the way he wanted to. Uh, this is the first titanium nib that I've tried that worked just perfectly out of the box. It's wet it's bouncy, and it's a really, really nice writer. So you've got, you know, just a really nice, juicy, wet nib. I mean, look at that. Oh, it's just, it's perfect. Um, and part of that comes from just the natural flexiness of the nib. Now, I'm going to use the term flexiness with a little bit of trepidation because titanium nibs are fairly easy to spring. Um, they don't have that snapback you get from 14 karat gold. They tend to be a little bit spongier feeling. So you want to be careful if you're going to play around with flexing them because you can push them. These nibs, in my experience, don't give you the same feedback. And I, I guess feedback's the wrong term, but it doesn't have the same feel as a gold flex nib. So if you are flexing this pen with the expectation that you're going to get that notification from the nib saying, hey, I'm about to spring, you're probably not going to get it with a titanium nib. So don't push it too hard, especially not at first. That being said, go ahead and check this out. So you get a nice little bit of spread. It doesn't take a lot of energy. And you'll notice that I can get some real nice ink pooling when I do push that nib just a little bit. So uh, this is a nib, because it is so wet and because you can get the pooling from the bouncy motion, this is a nib that loves a highly shaded ink. And in case uh, anyone asks, this is uh, Karandash Hypnotic Turquoise. Really lovely ink. Um, so yeah, and as a reverse writer, this is really quite a nice nib as well. Um, the steel one is a better reverse writer, I think, and that's fine because with flexible nibs, you really do want to be careful writing with them the wrong way, in my opinion. But man, I love this nib. It's just, the titanium nib for me is just a dream. It's one of the nicest titanium nibs I've ever used. It's one of the nicer nibs I've ever used. It's, it's really, it's a nice one. And you know, once upon a time, I didn't care for this kind of unpolished look that titanium nibs come with, but it's growing on me. Um, it has grown on me, and I, I kind of like that matte finish now. One other thing to note is on the titanium version of this pen, um, it doesn't seem to post. I mean, there's a little click here, um, but it, it comes loose really easily. So this, this one doesn't post quite as nicely as the polycarb version does. And it feels like it doesn't post quite as deeply either. Um, it's still very nicely balanced, fits nicely in the hand. But when it compared to the polycarb one, if you're a poster, you might like the lightness of the polycarb and the way it posts a little bit better.
Now, pricing the tactile turn gist can be a little tricky because there are so many varieties and options to pick from, it's hard to know exactly what you're going to spend. I think you can get them anywhere from around $80 to as much as four or $500, depending on the options you pick. So I went on the website and priced the two versions that I have. The polycarb with the Damascus steel finial and section and a steel nib uh, are listed, have a purchase price of $179 on the Tactile Turn website. <clears throat> the all titanium version with a titanium nib have a price of $279. Um, even though the, the titanium version is about $100 more expensive than the polycarb version, this is the version I would pick if given my, my druthers. There's also the, uh, the black metal version, which I think is just sexy as hell, um, that I would love to get a hold of, but I don't have one of those. So um, that, that may be at some point in the future as well. But the titanium version, the extra heft and the slightly more solid feel, plus this, the thread finish on, you know, the, the tactile finish on the outside of this pen just feels better in metal than it does in polycarb, in my opinion. I really, really like the feel of the titanium version of this pen, more so than the, the polycarb version. It just doesn't feel quite right um, to me on this polycarb version. So uh, is it worth it? I think so, especially if you can get the titanium version with the titanium nib. That titanium nib is, is something pretty special. It writes really nicely. Uh, it's, it's a small company manufacturing here in the US. Uh, they're just getting, well, not just getting started. They've been around for a few years, but they haven't been around for, you know, 100 years. So it's a really, really nice pen. Um, a couple design changes I would probably make would, would be to, uh, to try to make the pen post a little bit more securely and um, to extend the pen maybe another half inch or so, so I could put a, a regular full-size converter in here. But aside from that, I really have no complaints about the pen. It's really well manufactured, the fit and finish is spectacular, and, uh, and based on the materials it's made from, it's actually pretty affordable. So that will do it for my review of the Tactile Turn Gist. Thank you to Tactile Turn for providing the titanium version of this pen for review purposes. I do appreciate it. And if you have any questions or comments or your own experiences with the Tactile Turn Gist, you can head over to penhabit.com and leave a comment there on the blog post. Also see the, the additional photos in high resolution and the written blog post, or you can leave them on YouTube in the comments section there, and I will try to respond to them as I can. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.